comes reality. We live in a world where first impressions mean everything, do they not? First impressions mean everything. I mean, think of it this way. You can literally meet somebody who is the nicest person in the world on a regular basis, right? And you meet them and whatever, and they just happen to be on a, having a bad day. You meet that person, they're having a bad day, you're not going to label them. The next day you meet them, they're back to normal, they're back to being happy, whatever, and what are you going to say? Looks like the witch is having a good day, right? So you're going to think, first impressions. Unlike you can meet someone who's a terrible person, just absolutely terrible, but you meet them on the first time and they're in a great mood, whatever. Next day they have a bad day, you go, hey, just give them a break. You know, they, they need a little bit of a break right now, right? This is what happens, because first impressions do everything for us. Think of it this way. If you, how many of you have children? Wow. I guess one thing we can do is breed, huh? <laughs> That's never been said from here, has it? This, this is going to get edited. Sorry, Joyce. So, how many of you have children again? Show me. Okay, how many of you have uh, a dog, something? How many of you have somebody you care about? I'm going to get all your hands here. Okay, so the reason why I ask this question, if you meeting someone, if the first time you met someone, if literally your livelihood, if them eating the next week depended on them liking you or not liking you, would you greet people differently? Ask yourself that question. See, I'm all about, like, we always know these principles, but how intentional are we about these principles? If your family eating, if you eating, if you living, striving, you know, whatever it may be, if it literally depended on each person, them liking you or not liking you based on that interaction, would you greet people differently? And yet what I'm telling you is that you have complete control over how that goes. See, watch this. Everybody in there, I want you to, I want you to stand up and greet somebody less attractive than you. <laughs> Good to see you, man. First time, guys. First time that's ever been done. You really are going to do this while I'm talking, aren't you? <laughs> See, he knows, he knows that he's a pastor here and I have to keep it easy, and there's all these things running through my head that I want to say right now, but it just wouldn't be respectful. So what he's really doing is taking advantage of the situation. I just want to point that out, okay? It's like Bishop all over again, right? So anyway, the point is, you know, I said that, you know, ha-ha, whatever. But let me ask you this. You just laughed when you said that. If I told you at that moment to greet the person next to you, would it have been easier, more difficult? What would it have been? Why? See, so here's the thing, guys. We have the ability to literally control physiologically what happens with us. Do you know what actually controls? Like, a lot of times you meet people, right? The interaction you have, I said that you have to understand that you actually need people. And this is tough for a lot of people to say. You get people especially, like I was raised by a single mother, who it's that whole mentality, right? I don't need anybody. I just have, right? I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. Usually people who say, I don't care what anybody says, care more than anybody. It's a, f it's a defense mechanism. Okay? And so what I'm doing right now is not to call you out, but more so so we can learn from these things, so we can grow from these things, right? And so my point was this, though. You get these people, and, and you've got these interactions going on, and you, you, know, you change your physiology. You can actually have a control over what you do. You can have control over your physiology and those things. Do your emotions have anything to do with your interactions with people? Yes. You, you've said before, that person's crazy. Why did you come up with that reason? What, what made you think that? Emotions have so much. Do you know what actually controls your emotions? You guys have read a lot of books on this, I can see. It's like crickets in the background. <laughs> do you realize your emotions actually dictate your emotions? I'm not going to do it right now, but if I wanted to, I'd tell every one of you to stand up and scream at the top of your lungs right now. You'd sit down and feel like an idiot, but guess what? You would feel better at that moment. You see, this is what great people have understood. This is what great people have learned. They have learned this. You look at, for example, right now we have President Obama, in, and this isn't a political thing. I don't care, hate him, like him, whatever. This has nothing to do with that. But we, do you, why do you think they have people, PR people, whatever, that make hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars that teach them how to talk, teach them voice reflection? Have you ever heard that President Obama is charismatic? Anybody ever heard that? What the heck is charisma? Can somebody tell me? Is it like a skunk? He comes in and just charismatizes the room? What? <laughs> What is charisma, really, when you get down to it? What is it? Here's the thing. Can everybody see me here? If not, I can't, I can't see you saying no. So if you guys can see me right now, what is the difference right now between this right here and this? What's the difference? It was about a quarter of an inch. What did it say to you? Confidence, lack of confidence. More importantly, what did it do to you? If I got up and I said, because I got up here and I said, guys, you know what, we're going to have a good time tonight, we're going to, you know, all this kind of stuff. If instead of doing that, I said the exact same words I said to you, but I went, hey guys, we're going to have a good time tonight. Are you ready? What would be your response? 
What would be your response? Seriously. You would fake a phone call and leave the room, right? You'd, it's just like that, right? Good to see you, man, right? You would do that exact thing. Why? Communication is 7% verbal, 93% a whole lot of other things. You know, I'm known, I'm known on the road as like the, uh, the why guy. That's what I am, right? Like the modern day, like you have the Anthony Robbins guy, whatever. They're all about the why. Why do things happen? How do things happen? Because everything makes sense. We all do things for specific reasons. You know, I get my friends, I get around them, and they'll say, you know, we're going out to have fun. Don't analyze me. You know, whatever. Because all of our stuff says something. You don't need to get verbal for you to tell me something. It's 93% of everything else. When I look at you and you're listening to me, you're telling me something right now where your head is, where your hands are, how you sit, what look you have, how closed your eyes are, how open your eyes are. All of these things say something about where you are. But how many of us understand those principles? Because I'm telling you that you will do better with more people around you. You know, there's this misconception out there that successful people are, a are able to get so much more done in a shorter amount of time. Has anybody ever heard that? Somebody tell me. They're able to get so much more done in a shorter amount of time. And in that case, it may be true. Maybe they can get 10 things done in nine minutes instead of nine things done in nine minutes. That's great. But that doesn't, ca that doesn't catapult you to greatness, right? What, what successful people have learned and what the truth is about successful people, it's not that they get so much more done on their own. It's that they have so many more people working on their behalf. Yes. That's really what it comes down to. You know, when you look at it, like, uh, uh, you know, events and stuff that I book now, when I was just in the back right now, I just got a, a Facebook message over. This is good news, huh? A Facebook message over, and they said, we want you to come speak at our event, whatever, because so-and-so told us that you were amazing, and that, you know, whatever, and this one said whatever. More people working on your behalf. Is generally speaking, the person who wins the presidency of the United States, are they the highest IQ, brightest person in the whole United States of America? Okay, you guys took a long time to answer that. That's great. So what is it then? What are they generally good at? Networking, grassroots, they have more people working on their behalf. Does that make sense? Okay, so right off the bat, we need to stop this mentality of, I don't need anybody, I don't need this, I don't need... We need people. And the better you are at these skills, and believe me, guys, I could do three hours on this one topic right here. I have so many things I want to say that I'm not going to say right now for the sake of time. And so we need people. And the more we recognize that, the more intentional we are about the skills that it takes to get people to like us, the more better we're going to do. That's great English, right? The more better we're going to do, right? Let me, have anybody ever asked this question, right? You have somebody close to you, whatever. How many of you have ever asked the question to somebody close to you, if you could change one thing about me, what would you change? That's a tough question to ask. If you could change one thing about me, what would you change? How many of you have ever asked that question? Don't, don't raise it too quick. Now, here's what happens with that question. And by the way, you better go to someone you trust. And for any of you that are married, if you can't figure something out, just go get into a fight with your spouse. They will tell you everything you need to change, all right? <laughs> Ask me how I know that one, okay? So we know that this is true, but here's what's funny. Some of the answers that are going to come about aren't even true about you, and yet they are the perception. Right. Let me give you a perfect example. I am somebody that, you know, I do this for a living, but the truth is I'm an extremely introverted guy. And I went and married an Italian woman, right? We get together three times a week, family, and the other two, we're getting together with friends, and the other one, we're planning what else we're going to do, right? So I'm this extremely introverted guy, where I would literally live in a cave. I mean, my father's here tonight. You live in a 4,000-square-foot cabin on 11 acres on a lake by yourself, right? Yeah, 16, <laughs> yeah, you know? So, I mean, that's right, you bought, right? But you see my point, though. Those kinds of personalities, extremely introverted. But you know what happens with those kind of personalities when you're not intentional about what you do? I go to events, and a lot of times I'll go to events, and part of the contract is you have to come to the pre-event or come to the post-event, come meet the people, come say hello, come do whatever it is, right? And I would literally go to these events, and I would hate it. The whole time, I'd be going, how long am I going to stay? We're going to have the same old conversation. What are you up to? What are you up to? What's the number one key to my success? What's the, oh, okay, never heard that question before. And you, know, you go through these whole kinds of things. And what I used to do is literally, don't have my phone on me, I'd go stand in the corner, act like I was on the phone for 25 minutes, make sure the organizer saw that I was there, and then say goodnight, everybody. Now, it wasn't because I disliked people, it was because of this introverted nature. But you know what came from that? Do you know how that appeared to other people? Arrogant. What are you, too good for us? What you, it had nothing to do with that. I actually enjoy interacting, but it was just that, that nature that pulled me aside. And they said, wow, what is he, too good for us? What is he, does that hurt or help my business? Okay, so that's a perfect example. Things that may or may not actually even be true about you, but we have to ask the question.